ladies and gentlemen, you know, many of you might have heard about this man, maybe directly or indirectly over the years. This man, Wayne Bryan, was jailed in Angola and given a life sentence over stealing hedge clippers. You know, and it's the reason why many people don't like this system. They don't. And this is why you're hearing a lot about police reform and constantly hearing about criminal uh, reform because they know this stuff ain't right. You wouldn't have to keep reforming something if it was doing what it was supposed to do. But ladies and gentlemen, he was set free on October 15th, 2020. And I noticed it was a black female judge that let him go. He, st you know, he was still in there way too long over some damn hedge clippers, 20 years. And they gave him a life sentence over that. We have seen this so many times in this system, even marijuana. They want to give you these astronomical sentences over marijuana. It is just laughable that they are still putting, you know, people in jail for that reason. To this very day, there are people still being jailed over marijuana and they're selling it in businesses all across the country. You know, but I just chalk that up as they don't want to lose all of the money that they get to gain off of these prisoners. You get all this free labor, you know, this is what literally replaced slavery in the country, prison. So this is NBC News, October 16th, 2020, a black man in Louisiana serving life in prison for stealing hedge clippers more than two decades ago was granted parole months after the state Supreme Court declined to review his sentence. Should have never been in there for no damn 20 years over some hedge clippers. But see, these people, they see it as nothing as far as playing with other people's lives. See, as long as it don't impact them, they don't care. Yeah, maybe that explains why your country is falling apart now. The Board of Pardons and Committee on Parole voted Thursday to release Fair Wayne Bryan, 63 record show. He walked out of the prison later that day after serving more than 20 years at the state penitentiary in Angola. And this is according to his attorney. Bryan will enter into a program in Baton Rouge that help prisoners adjust to life after they are released. Eventually, he will be allowed to live with his brother in Shreveport. Under the condition of his parole, Brian will have a curfew and must attend Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Why? He was a drunk in jail? And community service. The Louisiana American Civil Liberties Union called the board's decision to grant parole a long overdue victory. This is not a victory for this man. Look at all the years he lost. He's 63, which means he was 43 when he went in there. This ain't no victory for this man. The hell are y'all talking about? All right, so, oh no, he was 38. Brian was 38 when he was arrested in January 1997 for taking a pair of clippers from a carport storeroom at a home in Shreveport. The owner was alerted to the theft and chased Brian off that year and a jury convicted him of attempted simple burglary. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. So, you know, they claim they considered him a habitual offender under, uh, under the state, but you know, 
it was a bunch of petty crimes, y'all. That's all it was. It was a bunch of petty crimes. He never took anybody's life. He didn't rape anybody, you know, nothing like that. It was just a bunch of petty crimes. That, you know, even with that, it still don't equal up to a life sentence. That's ridiculous. Brian, in previous appeals, argued that his sentence were, was unconstitutionally harsh. And in July, the state Supreme Court declined to review his sentence. A uh, court spokesperson told NBC News in August that five of the court's seven justices, all white men, denied his request without giving an explanation. See, that's the problem right there. It is too many people that don't look like us that's doing all the judging. That's been a problem from day one. I don't believe y'all should be judging us. I don't believe you should be overseeing us in our communities with the police. I don't believe any of that stuff should be going on because you have already shown you aren't going to be fair about nothing. And that being said, you shouldn't be trying to arrest us and reprimand us and punish us. That shouldn't be coming from the same people that enslaved us. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be coming from you. Because you ain't going to do the right thing. We already seen that historically already. You ain't going to do the right thing. Okay, so this man's life sentence for a failed attempt to steal a set of hedge cl uh, clippers is grossly out of proportion to the crime and serves no legislative penal purpose, Johnson wrote, comparing to the post-Reconstruction era laws that mandated harsh penalties for petty theft associated with poverty. She said those laws were largely designed to re-enslave African-Americans and undoubtedly contribute to the expansion of the black prison population that began in the 1870s. As in this case demonstrates their modern manifestation, harsh habitual offender laws, that permit a life sentence for a black man convicted of property crimes, Johnson wrote. Brian had several past convictions and, you know, he just stole things. That's really all he did. It was just little petty things. But his only violent conviction, the Chief Justice noted in her a dissent was for armed robbery in 1979, and the rest of it was unarmed little petty crimes. And he served time for each and every one of those things. You know, what? that's one thing. They have this system designed. Once you get caught up in the system, you're in it forever. That's how they want it. They don't want you to free yourself from the system. And, and in many cases, y'all, let's just take, for example, the fires out in California. They take these prisoners out and, you know, they get complete training from start to finish as a firefighter, right? When they get out of prison, they can't get hired for a job that they were trained for while they were in jail. In fact, especially in the case of anyone in the black community that's been jailed, it's very difficult to get a job. And see y'all, they collectively do this on purpose to make sure you can never free yourself from the system. At the end of the day, that is what it's all about. But they don't do white criminals like that. White criminals can come out and get dozens of chances to get their life together, but they don't do that for us at all. They want to ensure that you will always be in the system by denying you jobs, by denying you opportunity. And if you don't have opportunity, you sure can't get housing. And if you have no income, what is left for you to do but to go back out there and reoffend again. 
That's how they want it. And see, if they really wanted the system to work, once people get out of jail, you would get a chance, an opportunity. That would be open to everybody, but it's not. It's not. Look. Look at the stuff they came up with during Reconstruction. Vagrancy. You went to jail and became a slave again over vagrancy. I mean, so they, these folks are petty and their laws are petty. And the whole system is designed to keep us in an enslaved state. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And he just happened to get caught up in their slave system once again. Wow. You know, when they say you're habitual, well, always go back and look at the root cause of why many of these people are habitual. They were already in very impoverished type of lifestyles to begin with. And a lot of that is done by design, just like redlining is done by design to keep, uh, you know, a group of poor people boxed in around each other. So they pretty much set you up for failure and they know they're doing this and then turn around and tell you to take responsibility. No, you need to take responsibility for this failed system that you set up because America is falling. It's falling right up in everybody's face. You need to take responsibility for your failures. But ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think. I'm glad Wayne Bryan is finally free.